Welcome back everyone! For today's video, we are going to be taking a look at some of our games that have been played by subs of the YouTube channel. Now, recently I did a video on a very specific variation in the London system, and today we're going to be taking a look at a slightly different setup. So let's dive right into it. So for our first game, we have a game that's played between Dago72 and Devil525. The players are rated about 1,000, and this is a 10-minute game. So the game starts with d4, d5, knight to f3, knight f6, bishop to f4, and now bishop to f5 is played. In some other videos, I have looked at setups with e6 or c5 and knight c6, but for today, we're going to focus on a line where black tries to mirror the white development by bringing out the bishop on the same diagonal as the white bishop, which has gone to f4. So this game continues with knight c3. Now, this is a slight mistake here. What I would recommend is that if someone plays bishop f5, and mind you, this is not a system that I would recommend to intermediate players or beginners specifically, is that you have to react completely differently than you normally would against almost any other set. 99% of the time against other setups, say e6, you go e3, let's just say c5, c3, knight c6, bishop d3. You always do the setup with the bishops on d3 and f4, knights on d2 and f3 combined with the sort of mini pyramid from, from all these pawns, b2 to d4, and then f2 to d4 as well. You get the pyramid, develop the bishops and the knights, and this setup you do almost universally however when black brings out this light square bishop early you kind of need to play a different setup entirely so what you should play against the setup with bishop f5 is to play this move pawn to c4 here and the reason being that if you play a move like c3 for example black can always just mirror you and you end up in a situation where when you go bishop d3 we end up with a very symmetrical position normally what's going to happen is all the bishops are going to be traded off and with the symmetrical pawn position here basically mirror essentially it's very hard to create a lot of play and the plans don't flow you don't have a straightforward plan of what you're aiming for anymore so what I recommend here is to play this move c4 and now black has a couple of options now what black should play here most likely is play this move e6 to open up the diagonal for the dark sword bishop and now you want to bring the queen out to b3 right away to target this pawn on b7 as well as potentially targeting this pawn on d5 which is guarded at the moment so when you play queen b3 black is a very difficult decision now players who are stronger like myself who have played this from the black side black is okay here but you really have to be extremely precise in order to avoid falling into a lot of or falling into traps and losing the game very very quickly so for example after queen b3 one move that you might expect a newer player to play is a move like b6 here now after b6 white should play knight to c3 trying to put more pressure on this pawn you have the queen the knight the pawn everything is aiming at this pawn and now let's just say black goes c6 to try and defend the pawn here you can play a very simple move like rook to c1 let's say black plays bishop to e7 for example you take the pawn here if black takes back with the c pawn you can actually go knight to b5 and this is very scary for black you're probably already close to winning here because if black castles the king you go knight to seven winning the rook in the corner and if black tries to play knight a6 to stop knight c7 you can just go queen to a4 here targeting the knight and if the knight moves to say b4 after knight to c7 here it's a check on the king you're winning the rook and it's a complete disaster so this is one sample line of what could happen if black tries to play c6 now if black were to say take on c4 which is another possibility after queen takes c4 and play bishop to d6 because currently you're threatening to win this pawn let's say they go bishop d6 here you can just play a move like bishop to g5 if black castles for example you have e4 black cannot capture the knight because there goes the queen same thing if you take with the bishop i take your bishop when you take back you lose the queen and if you move the bishop away to g6 there's e5 here forking the bishop and the knight and white is simply winning material so this is very very good and very easy to play if black tries to play with like bishop e7 for example even something like bishop takes f6 bishop takes f6 and e4 here is very strong after bishop g6 bishop e2 castles castles white should be better one sample line just to give you guys an idea of how to play let's say black plays knight d7 you can go rook to d1 idea being that if black plays c5 you, you take the pawn black cannot recapture the knight because then you lose the queen and if black plays a move like rook e8 you can follow this up with rook a c1 you have ideas like knight b5 you can also push d5 or e5 all your pieces are placed very well here and you'll try to play on these two files where you have these two rooks the c and the d files so this is probably what you should do now another line that black might also play if they're newer to the game and haven't studied this in depth is to play a move like queen to c8 guarding the pawn because with the pawn and the knight you're still guarding this one and the queen guards the pawn on b7 however after a move like queen to c8 here you can play e3 black will play a move like let's just say knight c6 and now it's very important that you put the knight on d2 here now you could go knight c3 which is relatively okay as well but the reason you put the knight on d2 here 
is that when black develops normally let's just say bishop to e7 you can now go rook c1 and there's a lot of pressure towards this knight on c6 as well as this pawn on c7 and white is doing very well whereas if you do play a move like knight to c3 this is still good for white don't get me wrong but after takes and bishop d6 black is only a little bit worse and black can try to survive and the plans aren't as obvious either in terms of what white should be playing for here so that's why i would recommend playing knight bd2 instead of knight to c3 now if you're playing someone who's really strong they're going to actually play knight to c6 here because the idea is that if you take the pawn on b7 black actually is knight to b4 here threatening to go knight c2 forking the king and the rook and the best way for white to respond is to play knight a3 now there are a couple different ways for black to play but one of the simplest ways is simply go rook to b8 here and after queen a7 go rook a8 queen to b7 and now there's this nasty trick rook takes a3 with knight c2 and the game is very very wild so you don't really want to do this so if someone does actually study the theory and they play this move knight to c6 probably what i would recommend here is that you play play this move knight to c3 here and normally black is going to play something like bishop to b4 you can just trade the pawns go e3 and then after castles you go bishop to e2 followed by castling to the queen side and you start to play into the middle game even here it's not easy for black to play because if you ever trade the bishop for the knight you take with the pawn you're still targeting this pawn on b7 and long term let's just say black plays a move like queen c you might even be able to play c4 getting rid of this pawn or even playing rook c1 first let's just say knight e7 c4 and playing on the c file and white should be better once again so this is generally what you should do if 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 you're playing against the system with bishop f5 and knight six again players who are newer to the game are a lot less likely to play the system because after this queen b3 move is played it's very very hard to defend in knight c6 for example you just gambling this pawn if you don't know the theory and you you haven't studied a lot you're not ever going to know that that's the correct move and the other moves queen c8 and b6 white has very straightforward plans either putting the knight on c3 pressure on d5 or knight d2 rook c1 and putting pressure on the pawn on c7 so it's pretty straightforward in terms of what you should be doing nonetheless this game continues with the move knight to c3 here knight c6 e3 e6 and now you'll notice that white can't really contest the center you can't put a pawn on c4 to challenge this pawn on d5 you can't really play e4 because black is over protecting it so it's very hard to come up with a concrete plan game continues with bishop d3 we get bishop to g6 queen to e2 is played bishop b4 castles queen to d7 played by black probably if i was playing with black here i would simply castle uh, and just keep keep pretty much symmetry alive nonetheless black plays queen d7 we get bishop to b5 a6 and now white goes back to d3 now again players are not super strong they're about 1000 this is a, a quick game 10 minutes for both sides so it's very easy to overlook uh the best move here nonetheless the correct move that white should play is this move knight to e5 attacking the queen if black takes a bishop you win the queen and with it you should win the game if black captures the knight uh-oh there goes the queen again so you can't really take the knight without losing the queen you can't take the bishop without losing the queen and if you move the queen to let's just say d6 now white can actually play knight takes knight and the bishop on f4 is attacking the queen this bishop guards the knight so black is simply lost if black goes queen to c8 for example another move you can take on c6 with the knight if black captures back you take the pawn with check and you will just simply capture the rook next move and win the game and if white not white sorry if black tries to capture the bishop here you can actually capture this bishop on b4 and now the smoke is cleared you'll see that white has two knights and a bishop black has a bishop and a knight so white is ahead by one extra pony so this would have been a very good move nonetheless white plays bishop to d3 we get castles a3 is played and now here devil goes bishop a5 now I really like a3 here Dago starts to understand what he's playing for the kings of castle to opposite sides now generally when you do castle kings on opposite sides the the simplest way of, of telling whether it's correct to castle to that side is looking at where the pawns are and whether one side can push the pawns forward so in this case I'm just going to play bishop bishop e7 which is not played in the game but just an example you look at this position after b4 white is able to push these pawns very quickly on the queen side towards where the black king is however let's just say um let me just play b3 just a random move if we get to a position like this where where we have this position black is very slow on the king side so yeah you can go h6 and g5 I'll just play rookie one g5 bishop g3 you're still very slow pushing the pawns up the board um and so in this case be, based on which side is able to push the pawns quicker up the board and attack generally that's how you can evaluate whether you're the one who's going to be attacking and whether you should castle the opposite sides or not because in this case when we look at this position after b4 bishop b6 b5 excellent move white's pawns are very fast black is not able to push any of these pawns here on the king side to where the white king is and so white should be winning so the game continues with knight a7 we get a4 played here now Dago should have just captured this pawn on the edge I mean maybe he, he didn't realize it was hanging 
Who knows what was going through his mind, but he plays A4 at any rate. Not a bad move either, anticipating that if black takes, you can take back with the pawn. And now you have this great open file for this rook in the corner. And if black doesn't take, let's just say black plays, I don't know, H5, for example, you can go A5, trapping the bishop on B6 here and winning the game. So it continues with a5 we get pawn to e4 played by dagger here now this is not a move that i particularly like probably following the themes of what you're playing for here i'd recommend going knight to e5 attacking the queen and after black moves the queen this is not something i expect a, a newer player to understand but probably what i would say in terms of themes and trying to come up with simplistic ideas i would play rook c1 here and let's just say if black trades a bishop you can take with the pawn to open up the diagonal but let's just say black plays i don't know bishop to f5 for example i would recommend playing a move like knight to d1 and after black plays say h5 now going c4 to open up the c file for the rook you have this bishop on f4 which is really well placed knight on e5 very well placed and trying to activate the towers on this open file now again retreating a knight backwards not something i expect someone who's a beginner or you know lower level intermediate to come up with nonetheless it is something to keep in mind that, that when you do have rooks and you have potential to open up files you should see if you can so game continues with e4 again white here can't really figure out what the plan is so dago decides to open up the center of the board we got some trades here and now we get bishop takes d4 dago plays rook a d1 excellent move we got f5 knight to c5 is played rook takes d4 also very good because the knight guards the rook but knight c5 completely fine queen to e7 knight takes bishop queen takes knight knight takes e6 and now queen to e7 played by devil extremely good move i mean maybe it's not that difficult to find but with the rook and the queen being being forked here it feels really easy to make a blunder but queen e7 hangs on at least temporarily because white cannot capture the rook with the knight because on uh-oh spaghettio it's a classic botez gambit you lose your queen so we get rook takes rook rook takes rook rookie one is played now bishop g5 is winning again very very difficult move to spot but it, it does win the game essentially because when black moves the queen you can take the rook with the bishop and your queen stays alive here so this would be winning instead rookie one is played we get rook to e8 g3 bishop f7 knight to d4 queen d7 bishop e3 c6 ooh and now dago plays b6 now in this position it's worth noting that what black should do is just simply trade off all the pieces here because in this position I, I don't know if I would say white is necessarily better uh, or black is better but white has some weaknesses on the queen side here and black's pawns are pretty safe you can always just go g6 and white can't really attack this pawn chain these pawns meanwhile are on light squares maybe there's a way to bring this bishop into like a2 b1 or c2 and win some pawns at, at that at any rate queen d7 is played bishop b3 c6 and now dago finds the classic dagger by going b6 here and the knight is simply stuck if you go to b5 i capture the knight and you have no other squares available so white should simply win c5 is played pawn takes knight pawn takes knight white makes a queen king c7 bishop to f4 check great moves king b6 and now we get queen to b5 which is a mistake a fairly serious mistake now what, what i would recommend in this position is simply look at look at the material count white has two queens and a rook black has a queen a rook a bishop and and so white essentially has one extra queen now one thing that i say to players who are newer to the game is you don't have to find like the greatest simplest way of finding a checkmate now you'll notice that, that you can see from the bar it says mate and four that being said in this position what you want to do with simply a pure extra queen is avoid any risk of some kind of big blunder so what i would suggest that dago should have been looking for here was to trade down the material by taking the rook here bishop takes and then taking because now the rook guards the queen you have the extra bishop and rook and you just trade down into a situation where black will only have pawns on the board and with only pawns you should be able to win this pretty easily so queen b5 is played now this is a huge mistake because after queen takes queen now mind you maybe dago thought this was checkmate maybe he thought king can't go anywhere it's game over but after queen takes queen white is actually in trouble here because if you take the queen on b5 i take your queen on a8 and if you play rook takes rook on e8 i can just play queen takes rook your queen is actually trapped in the corner there are no squares to go to so you would have to trade and now black is going to win the pawn on a4 let's just say bishop to e5 for example king c5 takes takes and with these two pawns going down the board on the queen side black is actually completely winning so queen b5 is a huge howler now as i said maybe dago thought it was checkmate and just lost his mind but really really tragic because now white is actually in a lot of trouble so we get rook takes rook queen b1 is played however not queen takes rook king g2 bishop d5 okay f3 now dago should still be winning queen takes pawn king to h3 is played queen to g2 and now we get king to h4 
Um, obviously, king takes g2 just wins the game. I'm really confused because, as you guys can see from the clocks, Dago is 5 minutes and 20 seconds, and Devil has 1 minute and 29 seconds. Huh? I'm confused. Anyway, king h4, queen h2, king g5, h6, king f5, queen to h5, and now you walk into checkmate. If you play king to g6 here, you can still hide the king on g7 or h7, and you're winning the game. But after takes and queen h5, you're simply getting checkmated. King has no squares available here. You can't go to e6 or e4. Can't go to e5. Can't go to f6. g6, g5, or g4. And tragedy strikes. You have to play bishop g5. And after queen takes g5, this is simply checkmate. Once again, king has no squares. And this is a very, very sad way to lose a game if you're Dago. Probably Dago got really excited, just my, my, my general intuition, is that probably he thought queen b5 was checkmate, really excited. He blundered queen takes queen, and he couldn't recover. Something like that. At any rate, a very, very tough loss for Dago. Despite playing the opening phase and the middle game very well, you need to play a complete game of chess and finish it off completely rather than letting your opponent get some hope and maybe make a blunder and lose the game. So very, very tragic for Dago. But nonetheless, there are positives to be taken away from the game. All right, so for our next game, we have a game between Beowulf 2008 from Canada and Aiden 1994 from the United Kingdom. So this game also starts out with d4, d5, bishop f4, bishop to f5, and now we get e3, knight c6, and here bishop d3 is played. Now, again, this is a little bit different because in the previous game, white had played knight f3 to start. So here, if you actually... If, I guess here you probably still can play c4. In fact, I think that's probably the best move. But you do be a little bit more careful, especially if you're newer to the game. Because after c4, you could get really scared about this knight before move, threatening to fork the king and the rook here. However, if black plays knight before, you go queen a4 check. You also attack the knight at the same time. Black cannot block with a pawn because there goes the pony. And if you have to go back with the pony, now you just play simple development. You take take and the knight c3 attack the queen queen goes back and now you go d5 knight goes back and now you go knight to b5 threatening to win the pawn on c7 and just like that the game is over and you should win now one sample line of, of it continuing is rook c8 knight takes pawn rook takes and bishop to b5 here and black is just tied up in all kinds of knots and you, you this should be winning so c4 is probably the best move here again whenever black plays bishop f5 you kind of need to invert it and try to play c4 as quickly as possible before your opponent gets just natural development with e6 knight c6 and bishop d6 because if you follow the normal setups as i mentioned with the previous game you don't really get the traditional play that you do in, versus a lot of other variations so bishop d3 is played instead unfortunately now we get e6 being played here we get bishop takes bishop pawn takes and queen d3 g6 and now again white plays this move c3 and this is a mistake here as you'll as you'll notice black is these double pawns on f7 and f5 they are they are somewhat steady here they're protected by the pawn on g6 so everything's holding together but in this position one of the themes that you're looking for now is it's going to be very hard to attack on this diagonal a lot of variations of the london you try to attack here with these pawns not going to happen so you're probably going to start to look to develop your pieces, obviously. But how do you try to create play here? Because again, the center is very closed here. So you generally, when the center is closed, you're looking to open up files. Now, you can never really push for e4, at least not easily, because black has two pawns simply guarding the square. So black would win material here. So the other way that you can play to open up open up uh files is to go c4 at some point now i wouldn't necessarily say you should play c4 right away here probably what i would advocate is to develop first knight f3 bishop to g7 castles knight to f6 and now you go c4 and after castles you can play knight to c3 which is completely reasonable to put pressure on this pawn on d5 but much like in the previous game i would actually recommend you go knight bd2 with a very simple plan that let's just say black goes a6 you can play rook a c1 and eventually you're trying to put pressure on the c file here with this rook on c1 and this bishop on f4 so this is what i would recommend now c3 is a reasonable move but again the whole theme of the simplicity of what you're playing for in the london system is very different when your opponent has played bishop f5 which is why i do always recommend that you try to play c4 as quickly as possible if they do play bishop f5 besides the fact that it's something different it's also just an extremely explosive idea so c3 is played we get b6 bishop to e5 is played and oh no h5 Ooh, that's a huge mistake um that is a big mistake by Aiden. Who knows what was going on? I and mean, we played this move after 12 seconds. Uh, the bishop, as you can see, is targeting the rook in the corner. So black should either take the bishop with the knight or simply just move a knight or maybe even push the pawn. But let's just say knight here, develop the bishop and castle the king. Alas, he goes h5. B wolf takes the rook on h8. Queen to e7 is played. And now we get knight to f3. Rook to d8. 
castles very very good play from b wolf just finishing his development here king is castled out of the center of the board rook to d6 is played and now we get queen to a6 knight to a5 b wolf takes a pawn why not it's free we get queen to d8 and now bishop to e5 another excellent move from b wolf here for 700 very impressed by this move one of the things they say in the game of chess is that backwards diagonal moves are the most difficult moves to find so b wolf bringing this bishop out of the corner to target the rook and the pawn also a bit of a wooden shield as well a uh, very very nice move we get rook to c6 knight bd2 excellent knight c4 b wolf goes queen a4 pinning the rook on c6 knight to a5 is played knight b3 excellent move trying to remove the defender of the rook if you take the knight defender is no longer there so you capture the rook and if black plays let's just say bishop h6 you trade the ponies and then you win the rook anyway so this is what we call removing the defender so queen to d7 is played we get knight takes a5 b takes a5 queen takes a5 and now knight to e7 is played and here b wolf makes his first big mistake of the game by playing bishop to f6 now up to this point b wolf has pretty much played a perfect game which for a 700 is phenomenal and now he makes a mistake now of course hard to criticize him because obviously mistakes are going to happen at this level but unfortunately after bishop f6 black can simply gobble the bishop b wolf gets knight e5 in however game continues with queen e6 queen takes c7 bishop to h6 now b wolf goes knight c6 which ooh starting to lose a thread here now one thing that's also important when you're newer to the game of chess is that you want to it's very difficult but sometimes you need to bring the rooks into the game now this is why I advocate against playing a lot of openings where you have closed files because when the files are closed it's very hard to activate the rooks now the way that you activate rooks there are a couple possibilities but probably the simplest one is to have an open file so let's just play some random moves where you got some position like this now when there are open files it's very easy because you can just put this rook or this rook on the c1 square and the rooks on an open file it's very clear cut what you're trying to do but when you don't have open files sometimes it becomes very difficult to understand how to play with the rooks and in this situation what you should do just as a basic concept of course almost any move is winning here is to go rook c1 so let's just say black plays h4 now you can play c4 and open up this file for the rooks because with all these pawns here the rooks are just really very very passive here and they're not active at all and rooks on open files are extremely powerful you always want rooks on those open lanes so we get bishop to h6 knight c6 is played and now knight takes c6 is played by aiden and this game already is not completely clear cut at this point black has a bishop and a knight for this rook here white does have a bunch of pawns on the queen side that he can push but the result is kind of a little bit in doubt at this point so we get a4 g5 aiden goes a5 now the great thing for aiden here actually in this in this game as i'm as i'm thinking about it is that by inadvertently hanging this pony he kind of gets forced to have to push the pawn because if, if you're looking at this from in terms of the pieces queen has no great squares you can't go to either of these squares you go here there goes the queen you go here there goes the queen so you have no checks you don't really have a good square to go to with the queen your rooks are kind of behind all these pawns so what is the obvious thing to do you, you if you can't really move the queen then you see these pawns and you think you can start pushing so it actually in a weird way makes a not Aiden, sorry b wolf's life a lot easier we get a4 g5 a5 knight takes pawn rook takes knight excellent move f4 played by Aiden now he probably should have gone king f8 so on rook a8 it's not the latter checkmate and you can escape on g7 of course white should still be winning but he should have tried it anyway instead we get f4 rook to a8 check is played queen c8 and now rook takes c8 is played here by b wolf which is checkmate so what to say overall this is an excellent game being played by b wolf now i did realize one thing um since you guys can tell these videos are not edited i'm doing it on the fly there were a couple lines that i forgot to mention earlier in the opening phase that i'm going to actually do now so it'll be a little bit out of order um but but to finish up finish up this game very very well played by b wolf um some of the concepts are you know they change a little bit but i can't really fault him for a lot of his decision making throughout it so i, I would say thumbs up for b wolf now before before we, we end this video i do want to get back to this variation just to show a little bit more because I realized that I forgot to um in this position after knight c6 c4 black can play e6 here and you should play knight c3 developing the knight to put pressure on the pawn black plays knight to f6 and in this position you have a very unusual theme here which is here you can go pawn to c5 and the reason you do this is obviously you create the classic connect board to win the game like Rajon Rondo always does but additionally you also stop black from playing bishop to d6 and contesting this bishop on the diagonal so you have a connect four you target the pawn on c7 but you also have another idea as well 
black black let's just say black plays bishop to e7 for example you can now go bishop d5 and when black castles you can play knight to f3 and let's just say black goes a6 you trade on c6 and here you have knight to e5 targeting this pawn pawn can't be pushed forward because white's pawns prevent that and after queen to e8 queen to a4 you simply win this pawn on c6 and if black tries to move the knight backwards let's just say knight b8 here you can castle c6 you go bishop to e2 knight bd7 now you play h3 so if there's no knight h5 because you have bishop h2 and after black plays h6 to stop knight h4 you now go b4 and the idea is very very straightforward here if black plays a move like rook to e8 you can now go b5 let's just say he plays bishop f8 you can trade the pawns and go queen a4 putting a lot of pressure on this pawn on c6 if black plays a move like rook c8 you have bishop a6 and now this rook is in a lot of trouble here due to the two b's so very straightforward if black plays a6 trying to um trying to stop b5 here you can just go a4 with the idea of playing for b5 anyway and white should be better so I did want to add that little bit because I forgot to mention that before um and, and obviously a lot a lot of stuff in this in the setup with bishop f5 does center around c4 so it's very very important that if someone plays bishop f5 you understand the concepts of playing c4 with knight c3 also with knight bd2 or with queen b3 that's generally what you're looking for is to play is to play for for um for some combination either knight c3 and queen b3 queen b3 queen b3 knight d2 and rook c1 also or in some cases like in this specific line you can play with c5 bishop b5 knight f3 and try to give black the stack pawns or push the pawns on the queen side so I hope you guys did learn a little bit of that I know I went pretty quickly through through that variation but nonetheless I think it's important to note because black can play bishop f5 and even though most players who are newer to the game won't play because it's very easy to blunder it's kind of like dealing with dynamite it's very easy to just like make a quick mistake and lose the game instantly as black so most people won't mention it if someone does play it you still need to know what to do so you are always looking to play explosive chess with c4 after they play this bishop f5 setup at any rate I hope you guys did enjoy this video make sure to hit that subscribe button below if you have not already and we'll be back with more great opening content in the very near future I hope you guys had a great one and nothing but the best Bye.